Welcome to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, this is Alex, and I have some gameplay tips in store for you that I think you'll definitely enjoy putting to use. If you're sensitive to light gameplay mechanic spoilers, beware, but for story stuff, there will be absolutely none of that here. If you're coming from some of the more traditional tips videos explaining the basics and not used to my style, well, I tend to focus on a little more odd or out-of-the-box style of advanced tips that focus on improving the moment-to-moment -moment fun factor of a game by uncovering things outside of the core fundamentals. Now, I've figured out some pretty cool stuff you can do in this that I think everyone should know before going into Valhalla, because the flashier you viking, the more fun you'll likely be having. Tip number one, Bow Mo. This first one can go easily missed for a while, but very useful to know, because catching air in Valhalla is a bow user's best friend. Anytime you're airborne, if you start aiming with the bow, you'll get a brief moment of slow-mo to line up shots, which is really going to become even more useful in a little bit, synergizing with a few other tips I have coming up. Consider this one of the more basic ones laying the foundation for later. During this mid-air slowdown period, some of the unlockable bow skills work as well, like Arrow Volley, which allows you to prime up multiple arrows at once and shotgun blast them out. Use this mid-air mechanic to set up some creative kills, hunt a little easier, or just go mine some rocks in style. Number 2, Torch Pro. The torch you can throw into your offhand at any time has way more practical use than simply illuminating your surroundings. Something you will likely discover early is using this while attacking, which will modify some of your attacks with the fire buildup, which can be also used with normally two-handed weapons. However, the torch can be used as an impromptu igniting source for your bow as well by simply dropping it and dunking your arrow in its flame. If you toss it on a waist-high wall and then post up on it, you can then fully act as a stationary incinerary turret with endless fire arrows, at least until your quiver is empty. Also, the quick-firing light bow types go a step further with this, thanks to your character holding the soon-to-be-readied arrows downward in their hand, which can also be dipped in a fire source as well, stocking you up until you expend them or put your bow away. Honestly, a super cool detail to even program that in. You can now use just one torch instead of many during a raid using this method to quickly and more efficiently light buildings on fire to make sure you're inflicting the most terror on those poor little settlements. You can also throw on the light bow combo skill which improves subsequent arrow shots to really get the most power out of your buffed up arrows if you're using the bow often for direct combat. Now with all this bow use, you're going to be burning through your arrows, and also burning through your arrows, so if you want to conserve as much ammo as possible, the torch is your absolute best friend again. Most all out of reach things that can be destroyed with an arrow, which highlight red, can also be broken with a well aimed toss of your torch instead. Since your magic viking pockets have an infinite supply of torches, but not arrows, you might want to use these instead for your day to day destruction. Number 3, the Heavy Dual Wield. This one is more of a friendly suggestion, but I highly recommend working towards the northwest of the skill tree to get the Heavy Dual Wield skill. With this, two-handed weapons can now be wielded in either hand and at the same time, opening up even more depth to the combat system. All of the weapons have special dual wield animations and attacks, like the really satisfying double poke to slam when you're wielding two great swords. When you are dual wielding, keep an eye out for those certain attacks that hit with both of the weapons, and those multi-hitting ones should help shape how you alternate between your light and heavy strikes during combos. You don't have to dual wield with two of the same large weapons, and a personal favorite setup of mine is the greatsword in the main hand, dagger in the offhand, thanks to the dagger's fast hitting offhand attack and evasive slash if you cut the attack short, which is the perfect alternative to the greatsword's wide sweeping slower attacks. You can have the best of both worlds by doing this fairly easily once you have at least 22 skill points to spend, which is obtainable in the first 3-5 to five hours or so if you aim straight for unlocking this. Resetting your skill tree is completely free and you can do it over and over, so no worries if you already headed in a different direction. Number 4, The Bow Finisher. 
since we are already just talking about skills. Another great one to get that really improves a ranged focus playstyle in Valhalla is the Bow Stun Finisher, just to the southeast in the skill tree. This will let you perform those stun finishers on enemies after you whittle down that meter above their health bar, but now you can do it from a distance with your bow. If you aim well and hit enemies in the glowing orange weak spots on them, this is one of the easiest ways to put them into that stun. There is another way to achieve slow-mo with a bow to line up these shots easier that I haven't explained yet however, not requiring an active ability to do so, and if you instead unlock the Brush with Death skill just to the west in the skill tree, this allows for yet another way to achieve slow-mo aiming. With your bow drawn, if you click in the left analog stick or press Alt on a keyboard, you'll be able to dodge without having to stop aiming. With the Brush of Death skill, if you evade at the right moment right before an attack hits, you'll get a brief moment of slow-mo to line up those weak spots, put your victims into stun, and finish them off before they even know what happened. Honestly, the ranged combat in Valhalla is the best of the entire series, making it a powerful and viable playstyle option right alongside the melee weapons. Number 5, Unorthodox Fishing. So you can fish the good old fashioned way, sure, but you're a viking and can make near anything more chaotic if you put your mind to it. For example, if you come across water that is shallow enough to stand in, but deep enough for fish to spawn in, now you can just as easily, if not more so, catch all the fish in the area. I found the greatsword's wide hitting attacks to be really good fish killers, along with the spear which can easily snipe fleeing fish thanks to its long reach and quick strikes. If you're having a hard time noticing where the groups of fish actually are, simply use your crow who can highlight and mark them and those indicators show up really easy to see out in the game world. If you want to catch some of the deeper sea fish where you can't stand and do this kind of silly method, but you want to do it in a more unorthodox way, no problem, find a stable or build one in your settlement, and there you can buy a perk that allows your horse, or doggo buddy in this case, to fully swim in deeper water. With this ability, you can easily pick off deeper sea fish with your bow without having to bust out your fishing net. All of these fish you will be rapidly accumulating can be given to the kid at the fishing hut in your settlement for some good unlocks like crafting materials, runes, and tattoos, then the rest that you can't give to him, sell them off to the vendor for a decent amount of money, more so the rarer the fish. The amount of money you can make doing this really all comes down to how much time you want to flail away at some aquatic life with medieval weaponry. Lastly, map focus. There are just tons of glowing icons on the map in Valhalla, but some are much more important than others. The blue ones are usually short side quest style things that vary quite a bit, but the gold ones, specifically the larger gold ones, are the super important ones that you want to go clear from your map first. If you zoom out far enough, you'll notice those smaller gold markers will disappear, which are the simple crafting materials and such in basic chests, but those larger ones you can still see while zoomed out are either brand new weapon types, new armor pieces, new active abilities, or some of the rare crafting materials. Once you get close enough to one of these, and scan it with your pulse, vision, animus, thingy, whatever it is, it will change the map icon to reflect what type of item it is. A gold icon looking like a piece of armor can obviously be a piece of armor, but can also be a weapon. The book looking icon is a new or upgraded active ability, and the metal ingot looking one is the rarer crafting materials you'll need to upgrade your weapons and armor. If you're feeling overwhelmed and hard to focus on what little icons on the map to check off first, I personally find it most therapeutic to clear off those larger gold icons first since those can more directly affect the gameplay mechanics specifically because of those weapon types and active abilities you can find. And with that, those were all the tips I had for you today to hopefully improve the general fun factor of Assassin's Creed Valhalla for you, and hey, if that can all be done with a simple watch of a video, no hands on the controller needed, that is truly the optimal goal of my channel. If you happen to find any of the stuff I covered in this to be useful, make sure to let me know which tip you found to be the best one, and if you've already been playing and figured out some other neat mechanical depth, let me know that as well so I can go in there and try it out. If you enjoyed the style of this video, consider sticking around at Boomstick Gaming, this is what I do here, and as always, this has been Alex, thanks for watching.
By the way, does this count as the length of flame ending? Let me know.